So which of the following sets are equal, meaning that their elements are the same? If you noticed, set B, C, D, and E are written in set builder notation. So I took set E and I deconstructed each aspect of set builder notation and explained what these things mean. So X represents what elements look like. In this case, it's just a lowercase letter. Now sometimes you might see a lowercase letter with like an arrow on top of it, which would usually represent that it's maybe a vector. Or you might have a matrix here, or you might have capital letters here, which would represent sets themselves. But the format of this variable gives an idea of what the elements in your set E look like. Now I want to be careful when I say what elements look like because there's no element in E that is X. X is not in E. It's just a placeholder for an arbitrary element in E. So if I wanted to grab an arbitrary element in E, X is a good variable to use to represent the objects in E. But there are no X's in E. E is actually a set of positive integers between negative one and three, but we'll get to that in a second. The second bit here is this weird symbol here, which you might have seen a couple times. From your textbook, it says, if S is a set, the notation X in S means that X is an element of S. So this is what the elements look like, and these elements are elements of this broader set. And this is kind of like the universe within our set builder notation, the set of positive integers, in this case, Z plus. So that includes one, two, three, four, five, and so on. And you might say, wait, none of those elements look like X. But again, X represents a variable, a placeholder for objects within the universe that we're working with, which in this case is the positive integers for E. Now, we don't want all positive integers in this set E. We have a rule here that restricts which elements we want. And if you notice, we're using X as a variable to create and construct this rule. Now you might be familiar with this notation that says negative one is less than X is less than three. Now there are lots of objects that are greater than negative one and less than three, but according to this preface here within the set builder notation, we're only working with positive integers. So X can only represent a positive integer. So X cannot be zero, even though zero is in between negative one and three, X cannot be zero because X is an element of the set of positive integers. So set E is really just the same as the set containing the two objects, one and two. These are both positive integers. They're both between negative one and three, and they're the only positive integers that satisfy this rule. So there are only two objects in E. So now that we've broken down the set builder notation, let's go back to the question, which of the following sets are equal? Let's look at B. B is a set of all elements in the real numbers such that this real number is greater than or equal to negative one and less than three. So in interval notation, we would write this as negative one comma three. This might be more familiar if you've taken pre-calculus or calculus. C is very similar to B, however, this is from negative one, three, where there's parentheses around the negative one. We don't include negative one for C. And then for D, D is all the integers between negative one and three. There are three integers from negative one to three, not including negative one or three, zero, one, and two. This time we include zero because zero is an integer. It's not a positive integer, but it's still an integer. So which sets are equal? It would be A and D. Those two sets are equal. Thanks, everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.